first joined the team, I hadn't heard of Spore, and they described it to me, and I was just like, are you crazy? <laughs> This is unlike anything I've ever worked on before. We're animating for characters, actors, who we don't know who they look like. Because we wanted the game to be very different, very procedural, and very based upon the user's creativity, we faced a number of significant technical issues about how can we do procedural animation, procedural texturing, things like that. How do you deal with you know, a creature that needs to animate that we don't know what it's going to be before it gets spit into the game. Working on The Sims wasn't easy at the time, but now in hindsight, you look at it and it's like, well, everything had one head, uh, two arms, two legs. In The Sims, you're, you're, you know, you're a human being, you're a person. In Spore, you're, a, you know, a tentacled monster with an eyeball in the back of your head and a mouth on your arm. Well, in most games, you have standard content, so you can design it up front, and then you have artists who are really, really good at this stuff go ahead and build the model, rig it, texture it, and do all those things. In Spore, we want to give the player the ability to make kind of new and cool things themselves instead of having it be canned content that they get from us. We give so much free will to the player, both in how they build things and what they look like and how they play the game. I've never really felt myself as a storyteller at all, and in fact, I've always been more interested in extracting the player's creativity and imposing my creativity on them. We have to make these systems that let the players take on the role of artists and transparently do the kind of things that we have to laboriously and painfully do in Maya. It's all been pretty difficult. Uh, starting from scratch on just about everything. We've basically created this system that lets you put pieces together in a way that's really intuitive and easy for anyone to do. Well, I can make a creature just by grabbing a limb and whacking it onto the side of a creature and all of a sudden the mesh seamlessly, smoothly regenerates around that uh, surface. So we have to do things like procedurally skin and weight the skin for a creature when a player kind of just sticks a, a limb on. The different creature mouths, the different hands, the different body shapes and configurations that you can put them in, these are all pre-authored, but the user feels like they're making the decision because no matter what they choose, or everything's going to look good because we planned it out that way. So you can create something, you know, a creature, a model that looks something like a Pixar artist would make over a, you know, several week period in a matter of minutes. Already with just the small group we have here building stuff in the editors, it's always surprising me kind of what we can do. Spore gives you a little taste of what it's like to be a modeler and an animator and a creative artist in the game business. We probably had to reach into every experience and every bit of animation knowledge that we've had in the past as animators to get this tool to be able to make the assets that we need. One of the neat things about Spore is it provides a place for these things that you've made to come to life, to be tested against, to be pushed back against, and to see them kind of do things. Someone asked Will a while back what he hoped people would get out of the game, and he said he hoped that people would realize they could be more creative than they thought. And I think that would be an amazing achievement. If we could put tools in the hands of people that let them feel like they were successfully creative, this would be a huge achievement in the game.